for anybody that's new you picked a good video to start with my name is Amy and I am going through infertility due to endometriosis and I have gone through infertility now for four and a half years so almost five years and I have done two rounds of IVF and that is kind of where I'm at today I thought I would do a video on exactly what is IVF and how does that process go because I know when I was told that I would need it I didn't fully understand what that involved I had a general idea but I definitely did not think that I was about to go on the roller coaster that I ended up going on so let's get into it IVF so IVF stands for in vitro fertilization and so the idea with IVF is that you can kind of create a baby outside of your body which is what I needed because me as a host environment for conceiving is not good because of my endometriosis so I'm going to kind of walk you through the whole process of IVF it is a much larger and longer process than what I had originally thought before I did it so I just thought it'd be good to do a video on the process of it and if you already know uh, feel free to just like this video and skip through um, but if you're newer here or you have stumbled across this video because you are about to do IVF um, just hang in there because I'm about to go through it so the way that IVF works is that they want to fertilize an egg outside of your body and so in order to do that um, there's kind of I guess three main stages there's stimulation retrieval and then transfer so typically a woman will produce one maybe two eggs a month but typically just one from their ovaries and then when you uh, have intercourse and the sperm reaches the egg and then we you know make a baby inside your body basically so what they do with IVF is they actually give you medication so that you make all kinds of eggs so that they can go in surgically remove those eggs and then um, fertilize them so put them with the sperm in a petri dish and so that is kind of the idea in order to do that though it's not as easy as that sounds so what they need to do in order to do that is they need to firstly downregulate you and what that means is that they need to kind of turn off all your body's natural hormone production so that they can stimulate the hormones and give you the hormones via pharmaceuticals so through uh, injections and pills and stuff so that they have control of exactly the dosage of how much hormones and stuff you're making and they want you to like I said make a whole bunch of eggs so that's the first thing that needs to happen so there's very diff various different ways to down regulate but typically it's a medication of some sort it's either an injection to do that or multiple injections um, or there's a nasal spray there's lots of different ways to do it and different clinics do it different ways then from there what they need to do is they need to give you that medication so that you make lots and lots and lots of eggs so instead of just making one they want you to make all kinds of eggs from each ovary so what that looks like is that is your stimulation medication so that often consists of uh, different injections what I so used was Menopure and gonal F, but there's lots of different medications that they will use depending on your specific case and situation but the idea of that is that you inject yourself with these medications and then you go in on a um, daily or every second day base and you get blood work to measure your hormone levels so your estrogen levels and then you get an internal ultrasound and what that is for is that they will actually go in with an ultrasound a wand Wanda we all know Wanda the wand and they will look at your ovaries and they can actually then count the follicles so each follicle that you grow in your ovaries typically contains an egg not all the time but theoretically each follicle should have an egg in it so you go in every second day and they look and they count them how many on your left how many on your right so it's quite a lengthy process when you're doing IVF then you're doing the 
injections every day and they will change those medications depending on the follicle count, the size of the follicle, and your estrogen levels. So it's kind of like a day by day process where they look and then depending on the results they may cater your medication some. So it's different for everyone but I think typically most people are on the stimulation meds anywhere between 8 and 16 days. So when you go what they're looking for is they want three of your follicles to be over a certain size and then that's how they know that they are ready. So oftentimes um, you're doing your two injections a day to make your follicles and then at some point you're usually taking a medication to stop you from ovulating. So it's to stop your ovaries from releasing those eggs because they want to keep them in there until they're ready to go and remove them. That brings us to the retrieval. So what happens at the retrieval, again, it's a little bit different depending on where you go, but basically what happens is you get medicated. So some people get sedated, some people get a cautious sedation, which is what I had, and they medicate you. And what they do is they go in vaginally and then they poke through your uterine wall and they syringe, they empty the follicles out. And so this is all done in your clinic in a room and then the embryologist is right there. So the embryologist is the one that is looking after your eggs and so they extract and drain all the follicles and then the embryologist takes that liquid from the follicle and they find the egg and then that's how they get the eggs. So it's a fairly straightforward procedure. Um, I've had it twice now. Different people react differently to it. Uh, for myself, I only took that one day off of work and then I was back to work afterwards. Um, it causes some cramping and stuff, but it for myself, it wasn't too, too bad. And then so while they're doing that, they actually get your, um, your husband or depending on your situation, sometimes people use donor, but whatever which way, they will collect the sperm and they will put them together. There's two different ways that they can do this step. One way is straightforward IVF when they basically put the sperm in the petri dish with an egg and let them do their job. The second way is when they uh, go through the sperm and they kind of pick one and, and they inject that sperm right into the egg. So they literally basically put the sperm into the egg, they inject it. And so that is called ICSI, which is what I had both times. Um, and so one's the other, it's just the way that they fertilize the egg. And then from that point on, what they do is they incubate them and they watch them grow. So in order for that egg to be fertilized, once it's fertilized, it's an embryo. And so once that embryo is fertilized, it has to grow an appropriate way for it to be viable to put into your body. So that's usually a five or six day process. So what they are looking for is that the cells are dividing properly and at the right rate. And so you have a five day wait where you may get updates. Sometimes you get an update every day, sometimes you get one on day one and not again till day five. It's different depending on the clinic. And so basically you go from your initial follicle count and then it drops down to how many eggs you get and then only so many of your eggs are mature enough to be used. So then it drops down again and then you usually have a fertilization update. So how many of those eggs actually fertilize because sometimes they won't all fertilize. Um, and then you have a waiting day period to find out how many five day embryos you have. So once they get to the day five, they want them to be what they call blast. And so basically all that is, is that it means the embryo has divided properly and it is ready to be either transferred back in or frozen. And so that brings us to the transfer. So the transfer also has two different routes. You can do what they call a fresh transfer. And what that means is that you get your retrieval and then five days after you put the embryo back in. 
And so oftentimes people do that. Uh, the other alternative is that they do a frozen transfer. And so what that means is that the embryos have been frozen and then they're thawed and transferred back in. So that is what they'll do if you have extra embryos. So say you transfer one, but you still have five more, they will freeze the remaining five so that you can use them at a later date. Oftentimes, sometimes what happens is that you can't do a transfer directly after your retrieval because you could um, get a condition called OHSS, which is just means that you're, um, you have grown all those eggs and your body is has really high, high estrogen levels and you're at risk yourself for um, having some health complications. So they will ask that you freeze them all and then transfer them at a later date. So that brings us to the transfer. So this is the fun part of IVF is the transfer. This is the exciting part. So when you get your transfer, you um, are already still on medication. At this point, you have been likely started on progesterone. There's a lot of different other medications you can do. Progesterone comes in a lot of different forms. Uh, oftentimes, it's a progesterone in oil shot, which is a quite a big intermuscular needle that you put into your kind of hip behind area. Um, there's also progesterone suppositories that people use and some people use both. So at this point, you're already on this. You start doing this five days before your transfer. Whether you do a frozen or a fresh transfer, you do need to be on progesterone prior to the transfer because your baby needs that. And so once you go in for your transfer, it's pretty anticlimactic. It's um, quick and it's relatively easy most of the time. Uh, it was for myself. So basically you go in, it's kind of like a pap. You go in, you put your legs up, um, they put the speculum in and they have an ultrasound and they put that on you so that they can see you have to have a full bladder. They put the ultrasound on you so that they can see what they're doing and the embryologist will bring out the embryo in a tiny, tiny little catheter. And I'm talking tiny guys, like embryos, you cannot see them unless it's a microscope. So they put the embryo in the catheter and they basically slide the catheter in and they basically release the embryo right in there. And the hope is that that five day embryo will start to get comfortable and it will implant. So it will attach to the uterine lining and then continue to grow. And that is kind of how you make a baby through IVF. So that is the generic process for um, IVF. I will say the other thing is that it's, it's quite a hard experience and it is quite long. It's not like you decide you're gonna do a IVF and then like the next month you're pregnant. You have to go through all of these different tests um, and all of these different procedures and everything. So it is a lengthy process and also when you go to do a second transfer. So when you go to do a frozen embryo transfer, you then have to kind of go back to turning all, doing a medication that turns all your natural hormone making, um, your natural body making hormones off so that they can kind of play around and manipulate how much of what hormones you're getting. And so when you do the frozen transfer, it still takes quite a while because you have to start from your cycle day one. You have to take a medication that stops, down regulates you, so stops you from naturally making hormones. And then you're instantly kind of doing estrogen, which can be through patches, it can be through oral medication, there's lots of different ways. And then you're slowly increasing that estrogen levels and then you have to go in get an ultrasound done between day 10 and 15 and check the lining of your uterus. They want your uterine lining to be a specific way before they transfer. So it needs to be a specific thickness and it needs to have kind of, needs to be triphasic. So it needs to have some different layers and stuff that they are looking for. And then from that ultrasound, if everything looks good, that's when you start your progesterone shots and then you do your transfer. And then you have to continue to do progesterone shots until you get your results. And if your results are positive, you continue to do those progesterone shots um, until you're 10 to 12 weeks pregnant usually. So it's quite uh, a lot of 
injections and it's quite a process and I really just remember when I started I thought it was just like you go in you do it they take the eggs out they fertilize them they grow they put them in like I thought it was like a month process when really it is a lot more than what I think people think and so it's hard it's long it's difficult and if you're about to do it and um, you know it's just know that you're not alone and it is it is hard but you can do it we are strong us women are so strong and we can do so much for our babies that we want and it's just um you just gotta stay strong and do it and it's 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 gonna work it's it's gotta work you go through all of that and so um and if it doesn't you'll be okay you'll figure it out one way or the other so I just wanted to do an overview of kind of what is IVF for anyone that's new or anyone that doesn't know and so if you've been here all along you kind of know all this so thanks for returning and if you've literally if you've made it through this long ass video give it a thumbs up and I will get back on track uh, in a couple weeks with my journey all right bye guys